Hi, this is your host of Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Dan Kirsch, co-founder, principal analyst, and managing director at Tech Strong Research. Dan, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, excited to be here. Yeah, uh, today we're going to talk about Tech Strong Research Report for Linode on multi-cloud and alternative cloud usage. Uh, before we talk about that, uh, just just Tell us a bit about what was the goal, what was the agenda behind this report? Yeah, so, so TechStrong Research is an industry analyst uh, research and consulting firm. We look at a number of different areas and, and cloud computing, cloud native development is one of those key areas. And of course, cloud is in, important for DevOps professionals. What we wanted to look at with this report is you know, sort of the, ri the rise of um, alternative cloud providers and also what are DevOps professionals um, thinking about when they're selecting a cloud platform. So no one needs, you know, new research to tell you that the cloud is on the rise, the cloud is popular. I'm not, you know, as someone who's been doing this for over a decade, I'm not going to write a report that says, wow, the cloud is important. But But what we did in this report is dug a little bit deeper and Look beyond the uh, big three hypervisors, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and uh, Google Cloud, GCP, that everyone is familiar with. And um, as you can imagine, a vast majority of our participants are using one of those uh, big three cloud providers. Thanks for sharing the idea behind the report. Now, can you also tell us, you know, who were the folks that you surveyed or who participated in this report? Yeah, we had over 500 um, uh, participants from over 30 different countries, 20 industries were represented, and the participants ranged from everyone from individual contributors to um, IT leaders and also a few business leaders as well. Now let's talk about you know uh, some of the key findings uh, from this report. Yeah, so I mean, what was most striking to me? So we we threw out a question. Um, now, do you, I believe the question was, do you consider your cloud provider a, a, a current or future competitor? It's an interesting question. We've been, I, I wrote um, the co-author in Hybrid Cloud for Dummies and Cloud for Dummies. And, you know, we're always talking about um, customers competing with uh, the, um, the cloud provider. And oftentimes people use the use case of, you know, Walmart is never going to want to become an AWS customer. So we asked this question, and I was fairly shocked. Over 50% of people said that they view their cloud provider as a current or future competitor. So I, I thought it would be you know, 15 20%. Over half was surprising. I, I think it comes from a number of different angles. So there are the uh, classic examples of you know, any, every... Google and AWS especially is getting into every single business, whether it's uh, you know everything from potentially car manufacturing to car selling to uh, travel industry, uh, pharmacies. But additionally, they're also competing with the partner ecosystem. So you have you know, thousands of companies whose revenue model is dependent on being on the partner um, ecosystem of one of these big three hyperscalers. And in many cases, the, um, the cloud providers themselves are, are building out capabilities that make their partners basically ob obsolete. So in fact, they're competing with their uh, partners. That was one. Uh, anything else that was? Uh... Another, another one of the key findings is that multi-cloud is here to stay. Over 70% of respondents are report using more than one cloud provider. So although, you know, often and various pundits will talk about the need to uh, go with a single cloud or, or put the vast majority of your um, workloads and data on a single cloud. What we're finding is that multi-cloud is here and it's here, it's here to stay. And I think this is through because of a number of different reasons. One is that through mergers and acquisitions, you're acquiring companies that are maybe standardized on a different platform. It's not so easy to move move you know if you acquire if you're a gcp company and you acquire a company that's standardized on aws it's not necessarily so easy to move those aws workloads and data onto um, your preferred platform additionally there's 
you know, different capabilities. Each cloud provider has different capabilities. You might want to use Azure for some of their um, machine learning capabilities. You might want to use an alternative cloud provider because it gives you um, easy access to DevOps environments. You might want to use AWS um, because of some other um, database as a service capabilities, for instance. So what we're finding is that multi-cloud is growing and it's really not going anywhere. And then a, uh, a third big highlight is, you know, so I promised I wasn't going to say, you know, here's a report to say that the cloud is a big deal or important. But, but what I am seeing is a ever increasing um, move to the cloud. So we, we're doing a survey uh, quarter by quarter, year over year. We've seen a double digit increase, approximately 75% of respondents report that they plan on moving um, more of their uh, IT infrastructure to the cloud. And that's a double digit increase over the last report that we did last year. So that's, that's a, um, you know, a, bi a big, a big increase and respondents attribute that to providing optionality and also reducing costs. Excellent. I want to go back to the first point that you talked about, which was that uh, asking uh, participants whether they see their cloud providers as potential competitors. Did you also ask uh, as a follow up that, you know, OK, you do see them as a competitor, but are you worried or concerned about that? Seeing someone as a competitor is fine. You know, we live in a cooperative or competing world, but are they there also concerns about Did you dig, dig deep into that as well or not? We, we, we probed it in a couple of different ways. You know, are you concerned that your cloud provider is going to steal your IP? Are you, are you concerned about um, ownership over your IP? You know, so, some cloud providers, it's questionable if you develop um, code on their platform, do you actually own your code? What we found is it, it's pretty, um, there, is a, there isn't a single um, answer. It, it was, it was ac across the board. And, and I think that's because what I touched on earlier, it's not, people are looking at their cloud providers as a competitor in, in a variety of different ways. So it, you know, even open source uh, providers are looking at, um, you know, a cloud provider might fork their open source offering. So, so there's not a single way that, that uh, cloud providers are competing with customers. It, it, it's a variety. And, and I do think that that is a reason why some, um, some customers are looking at alternative cloud providers. And uh, just to be clear, when I say alternative cloud providers, um, the top eight that, that I'm considering are DigitalOcean, uh, Equinix, Hepsner, Linode, which was acquired by Akamai, OVH, Rackspace, UpCloud, and Vulture. You know, there's there's many other smaller ones, but we're looking at these um, small smaller alternative cloud providers. And, and that is one of the reasons why uh, customers are choosing to go with one of them. Right. Uh, also, one more thing is, I mean, once again, uh, <laughs> I want to keep the focus on the research, but since, you know, you brought such great point is that when we do look at hyperscalers, what does happen is they offer way too much than what more, most folks want. Uh, in most cases, you just want compute, you just want networking, you want some you know, storage. In some cases, you might want Kubernetes offering, GP offering. But uh, did you also ask about, you know, that, Complexity also, you need to be a mathematician to calculate the cost that you're going to end up paying in the end. You know, it looks like cheap in the beginning, but those costs do pile up. You can actually buy a mainframe for the one you'll pay for a cloud for 10 years. Uh, did you also talk about this, you know, that, you know, ease of use, simplicity, complexity, because sometimes all I want is set up a website and run somewhere. That, that's a huge part of it. So, you know, if, if you go to uh, the AWS reInvent conference, for example, they list a huge number of off of offerings, new APIs, new capabilities. The reality is, you know, the vast majority of companies want access to compute, access to networking, access to storage, and the rest of it they're not particularly interested in. So, so it comes at a few different angles. One is, you know, if you if you're a customer of one of these big vendors, you do have access to you know things even like uh, quantum computing on demand. The reality is um, most people don't don't care, don't need that, and um, and there's also the complexity of billing. So the, those those platforms, the big the big three hypervisors and other big cloud platforms, each one bills in a different way. So you need to architect your workloads 
to uh, optimize the uh, cost structure. Uh, also, the cost of employees who are trained on those different platforms is is high and, and increasing. So, an AWS certified developer uh, command, commands a premium because the AWS platform is really uh, challenging. You know, not to say it's bad; it's it's you know very powerful. You can do just about anything you can imagine. But a, as you said, the uh, most businesses want access to compete compute to uh, you know, create an application, create a mobile app, run a, run a site, and aren't interested in uh, most of what those vendors have to offer. Um, anything else that you want to discuss? Because we talked about the, the idea behind the survey. We talked about who you talked to. We talked about some of the key findings. We also drilled down a bit into you know some of the findings. Anything else that you, this is off camera comment, that you were like, hey, Sopnil, we should talk about this also. You think you know, we have covered you know, some of the key you know, agenda for today's discussion? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what one area that that I find really interesting is, is the fact that you know, so we, we're talking about the big three hyperscalers; they're really important. Um, but but what's interesting is if you th those uh, eight companies that I mentioned earlier, if you combine the usage of across all of those eight providers in in the research that we did. They come in as the number, so you'd have to combine their users. They'd come come through as the number four cloud provider, which I think is interesting. So if you look at if you look at the alternative cloud market in totality, um, it, it is a uh, a large part of the uh, cloud ecosystem. And, and I think the um, you know the ac acquisition of Linode by Akamai is interesting, sort of bringing together this idea of. Um, Content delivery networks and uh, clouds, because you know, while you know, and it's interesting. A, num a number of people I've interviewed for this research say, um, you know, they don't want really heavyweight clouds that have every possible API, but they do want things to be easier for them. So, if there's a, um, a cloud provider, for instance, provides a CDN, that's interesting to them. They won't necessarily choose it, but it it makes their life easy because. At the end of the day, the you know, developers and businesses are really focused on outcomes that will impact their bottom line, that will improve uh, customer experiences, that will include that will improve uh, developer experiences, and ultimately the bottom line. So, you know, the idea if you're on, you know, one cloud or another, nobody really cares as long as it's secure, it acts predictably. It it doesn't doesn't make a difference to customers um, on-prem versus cloud or a variety of different clouds. Dan, thank you so much for taking time out today and share some of the, not only the, the findings of these reports, but also share your, your insights, you know, how this whole field is evolving, as you rightly said, you know, the cloud itself is evolving, and also the importance of multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, and the role that, you know, alternate cloud providers play, where a lot of folks, they still want to control their data, they still want to control, you know, all those things. So thanks for sharing those insights, and I would love to have you back on the show whenever you come up with the next report. Thank you. Yeah, this was a fun conversation. You can uh, check out our research at uh, techstrongresearch.com. Uh, join me on Twitter at DD Kirsch, and we're all, all over the web and uh, social media.